This Christmas, as a Catholic church in Singapore celebrates 200 years of faith, let us ignite and shine in faith. May we come together as one church to make Jesus a true reason for the season. Catholic 200 SG presents Christmas Ignite 2020. My dear brothers and sisters, this Christmas would be different from the previous Christmases we celebrate. But Christmas will always be meaningful when we allow Christ to be born in our hearts. And so even if we cannot celebrate Christmas in a large scale, we can make Christ still present. And most of all, let us not forget those who are poor, those who are suffering because of this COVID-19 pandemic. This is an occasion also we need to extend our Christmas joy to those who need our help. And so my dear brothers and sisters, I wish all of you a very blessed and holy Christmas and may you have a place for Jesus to be born in your heart. Hey, welcome to Christmas Ignite 2020, a virtual concert. And we're from the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, and I'm Bernard Lim. And I'm Eunice Olsen. Now, 2021 will see us commemorating 200 years of the Catholic Church here in Singapore. Now, of course, it is our privilege and pleasure to be your host for this evening's program. And this will, of course, lead up to the Holy Christmas Mass. And this year might have been one of the most challenging in a long time. But when it comes to Christmas, we'll always be able to rely on the one comforting truth in John 3.16. Uh, For God so loved the world that He gave us His only Son, and whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now this is of course is a time that we're celebrating with our family, our friends and our loved ones. But let's also not forget there are people around us who are not as fortunate. So let's also use this time to reach out to them. Now we are of course filled with love that our Creator came to us as a very precious child and as we delve into the Christmas carols, let us also unwrap the real gift of this season. I love laughing and spending time with my family. I like to see the Christmas lights. The thing I like most about Christmas is that we have holidays during Christmas season. Receiving presents and the festive decorations. I love the Christmas tree and the Christmas carol being sung. It's a time to spend with my family members. Uh, the conversations over a meal where I'm invited to recognize the movements of Christ in my life throughout the entire year. Most of us uh, living away from our families out here in Singapore. This is the period where I can set aside time to go see my friends, um, spend more time with my parents. To attend the mass so that I can pray for my family. The celebration of hope and joy. People come together and the baby Jesus joins us in the midst of all the joy. And the first song you're going to hear tonight is the Old Come Away Faithful, one of my favourite Christmas songs. Yes, I love it! Now, did you know also that this song was composed 200 years ago and it was completely in Latin at that time until it was translated into English 100 years later, which wow. means they had to sing this in Latin for like 100 years, but I can't even <laughs> say the name in Latin, okay? Just, just don't try, don't yeah. try. <laughs> This is about as old as the Catholic Church here in Singapore, which was earliest uh, mentioned around that time, about 200 years ago. Of course, to last for hundreds of years now, that is amazing. It takes so much community for everybody to come together. Now let's lift our praises to Jesus and singing for us, O Come All Ye Faithful, are the Cathedral Children's Choir and the Cathedral Choir of St. Gregory the Great, with Alphonsus Chern on the organ.
people. One of my favorite Christmas songs, by the way. Yeah? Thank you very much, the Cathedral Children's Choir and the Cathedral Choir of St. Gregory the Great. It's so nice to see children kind of carrying the, the lights yes. and children kind of playing handbells. Yeah, well. it's so sweet. Well done, children. Love it, love it, love it. For the 200 years of the Catholic Church in Singapore, our Archbishop has chosen the theme Ignite and Shine. Now, what does this mean? Well, basically, we've got so many people who have come before us, right? All the sacrifices that they've made for the church. Now, this is the time for us to remember all the contribution, to really feel gratitude for all that they've done and use that and ignite our passion in the Lord and now shine our light for others. Hmm. And of course, the next song, O Holy Night, will be sung in English and French to pay homage to Saint Laurent Imbert, one of the first French missionaries ever recorded to come to Singapore and who inspired the name of our cathedral, where we are, mm, right here. the first church in Singapore. And singing for us are Father Camille Camus, our Father Valerian Chong, Father Derek Yep, Father Liu Chong, and Brother Jean Gabriel Profila, joining us all the way from Rome. Let's allow this song to turn our hearts towards the one who made this one holy night truly divine. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of the dear Savior's birth. Lonely the world in sin and error pining, till he appeared and the soul found its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees O oh, he
Wow. I know. And you know that really is no mean feat, okay? Mm. Singing that song in both English and French. I was wondering. I know, okay. <laughs> so here's a little tidbit for all of you. Basically, Father uh. Val, Father Camille, and Friar Derek mm. learned the song, the pronunciation in French on the spot. Now they also oh. had to memorize it, okay? So and they were coached by Father Luke. So very cool. Shout out to all our very cool and talented priests. Fast learners as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next song you're about to hear is uh, Rise Up Shepherd and Follow. Now, it originated in the plantations in America. Uh, this song is written like a call and response and by the end of it, you will be able to hear the full story of Christmas. Hmm, that's one way to kind of orally pass down the, the stories for centuries, right? Exactly, it's a great way to learn, right? Yeah. And now it's your turn to listen to this story and singing for you is the Christus Laudatu Voce Choir from the Church of the Risen Christ. And that's a very joyful version of Rise Up, Shepherd and Follow from the choir from the Church of the Risen Christ. Of course, as we reflect and think about the spirit of Christmas, let's also once again think about what Christmas really means. Um, also going forward, thinking about what Ignite and Shine means. Um, as we reach out to um, Singaporeans, our low-income Singaporeans who are not as fortunate as us, let's also remember another group of workers here in Singapore. Mm. And of course, they are our migrant workers. And just remember that they're going to be spending Christmas this year uh, without their families. So everybody, please pray for them. But I think also even more than that, um, there's so many organizations in Singapore that help these migrant workers. If you want to be able to reach out to them, you can go through these amazing organizations as well. Absolutely. But moving along, the next song, Do You Hear What I Hear, originally was written as a plea for peace around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was Bing Cosby, uh, the famous crooner, who made the song a worldwide smash in 1963. Now let's pray for peace too in these very unusual times and let us spread the good news this season. Now it's time to welcome the choir from the Church of St. Mary of the Angels as they sing for us, do you hear what I hear? i 
because it's born. Remembering God's love. Loving my family members. Because it's a season of joy and thanksgiving, for Christ has come uh, on the earth. God spent time with his family, and I think spending time with family helps me to see Jesus and God in them. Hope for the world, especially during this pandemic, and also to give love to others. We believe it is the birth of our Saviour Jesus Christ that makes all our faith meaningful and all our sacrifice worthwhile. Jesus came in such a crazy way and it only shows the depth of the love that He has for us. And that's another beautiful song all of us here today. Yes, very, very nice. And of course, another song that originated 200 years ago is Les gens dans nos compagnies. The popular Christmas carol, Angels We Have Heard On High, is based on this. And the chorus of the song, Gloria in Excelsis Deo, reflects the chorus of the angel choir on that long ago blessed night. It's now time for us to sing glory to God in the highest from the bottom of our hearts, bringing angels we have heard on high to you and singers from the San Pedro Choir from the Church of Divine Mercy. Vern, you know I don't really know lyrics to songs, but mm -hmm. I definitely knew the chorus to that one. <laughs> <laughs> I just couldn't help sing along, it's awesome. Okay, so you've been tuning into the annual novena procession, Ma. So you would have heard the song, Tin Sang Yo Wei Hao Ma Ma, or Mother in Heaven, sung by Father Terence and Father Eugene. Now, especially for our celebrations in Christmas Ignite 2020, we have added to it the English version of this very well-loved song. It's a collaboration between the original composer from the Mustard Seed Music Ministry and the music arrangers from the Cathedral Choir of St. Gregory the Great. And this is a heartfelt tribute by a very large group of singers to Mother Mary, who was chosen by God to conceive and give birth to the baby Jesus. Tian Sang, Yo Wei Hao Ma Ma. Mother in Heaven is a song for Mary, Mother of God, Mother of all mankind. So let's welcome Father Terence Wee, Father Eugene Lee, Father Henry Siu, Father Peter Zhang, Sister Linda Sim, who, by the way, is also a Taekwondo champion with a black belt, don't mess with her. Wow. 
Sister Teresa Lim, Sister Wendy Wee and Sister Jocelyn Quack. They are joined by seven Mustard Seed members and the Novita Combined Choir. This is a very large group with Father Eugene on bass and lead guitar. Brian, do you know that there were so many people involved in this recording? And mm -hmm. I just wanted to tell you, okay, how much effort went behind this, okay? okay? Our crew got the four priests and four sisters to go down to a studio in Katong mm. and they recorded all their parts separately. Okay, that's a lot of work. Mm. And Father Eugene also worked together with the music arranger to learn the part of the lead guitar on the spot. Wow. during recording, okay? And the Novena Choirs also recorded their part separately. Mm. Uh, you know, our priests and our sisters were so sporting. And I just want to say this, they not only pray for us, they pray with us. Um, they do so much work for our community, uh, for the community in Singapore, of course. And on top of that, they also took time off to come and do this concert. So thank you so much to our fathers and our sisters. Thank you so much indeed. Yeah. Pray for the courage 
and humility to journey with uh, those who are suffering and especially those who are confronted with critical illnesses. Those who have unfortunately lost their jobs to, to the pandemic this year. For the people who are unable to celebrate Christmas with their family at their own house. That we may find Jesus in the simple blessings of our lives. To pray for our mothers and infants that they may be protected. Pray uh, that we'll all do our part to stop global warming. I like to pray for people from broken families. For our family and friends to always stay healthy and happy and to end this pandemic. Okay, we promise you this next uh, Christmas song written in the chorus style of Philip Stockford. It's sure to kind of bring your hearts uh, great cheer. And for the next song, the words are adapted from the traditional Christmas blessing found in the Book of Common Prayer, dating back as far as 1549. Hmm. Now, the composer's intention was for the song to be like a musical blessing, okay. with the choir delivering comfort to God's people through the celebration of the birth of Jesus. And let's welcome our friends from the Vita Vox Choir from Sacred Heart, Indonesia. In 2019, they performed in Singapore to help raise funds for the Catholic Foundation, and they're looking forward to being here with us this year. But of course, uh, they can't be with us here today. However, they've overcome the distance and the challenges to be here with us virtually to perform a Christmas blessing. Let their voices and song bless you in this difficult time to bring peace and goodwill to all people. Thank you so much to our dear friends from Indonesia. Well, by the blessings of our Lord, the Catholic Church continues to serve the community with your help and generosity. Now, if you're feeling the Christmas spirit and the Holy Spirit also kind of moves you to consider making a contribution to sustain the needs and the mission of our church. Indeed, the Christmas spirit is simply a love for all humanity. It is the gentle force that moves us to give what we can, to use what we have to help as we are able to, and to always be of kind comfort to those who have less than us. Now, just as we remember the gifts God has given us, we can now offer them to others. 
We hope you will play an important role in building up our community by giving as much as you can. We'll also be having a Feast of Music concert in December 2021. We'd like to call all musicians to come forward to participate and details to follow on the C200SG website. And finally, we want to thank you for being with us in this very special Christmas Ignite 2020 virtual concert. I mean, I had a great time, did wow, you, All the songs are great. I know everybody Love performed them. so well. <laughs> and if you've enjoyed this, please, please share this stream with your friends and family. We also want to thank the Catholic Foundation, all the participating choirs you did so well, and every single one of you who have helped to make this possible in this time. Now, let's bring everyone back to sing the finale. A medley of We Are The Reason and Hark The Herald Angels Sing together with Joshua Lim and Natalie Sason. As little children we would dream of Christmas morn And all the gifts and toys we knew we'd find But we never realized A baby born one blessed night Gave us the greatest gift of our lives As the years went by
Merry Christmas. Christmas. Blessed Christmas and happy holidays. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. everyone. Yay. Merry Christmas and God bless you all. And thank you so much for spending your Christmas Eve with all of us here. I really hope that the carols have helped you get into the spirit of Christmas. It is a celebration of the birth of God and our new beginnings. A season where you and your loved ones experience joy, hope and much love. I'm Eunice Olsen. And I'm Bernard Lim. See you next year. From all of us here, have, have a, a merry, merry and blessed, blessed Christmas. Christmas. Twenty twenty one is the two hundredth year of Catholicism in Singapore, and so for the church, this is a very momentous occasion. What we are commemorating is actually to look at the past two hundred years and to see where we have grown, and more importantly, it is also to work towards where the church is heading towards. We trace back to this letter by Laurent Imbert that was sent by his bishop from Siam to find out. The place in Singapore and to report back. So, in the letter that he sent back to his bishop, identifying that there were a few Catholics here already and there is a potential to begin the Catholic life, we count from that date of that letter. That's 200 years. All the religious came to pass on what they had received, you know, in such a way that it would grow in Singapore and it would become. A local church. So there was a missionary outreach to these people, and to me, that's where the church is. Where two or three are gathered in the Lord's name, the church is there. Many of the people here knew nothing about the Catholic faith, and yet people were ready to respond to the missionaries because they saw them as sincere people, people with deep convictions, and people who were ready to sacrifice their lives. And most of all, they do not proclaim the gospel so much in words, but in their lives. This was what actually inspired the people that what these missionaries were doing must have really been inspired by God. When I was 10 years old, there was this nun who taught us catechism and then she made us all stretch our hands. Look up at the cross, see how much Jesus loved you. And I left my country and my family uh, to tell you this. And it's worthwhile spending your life uh, telling people about how much Jesus loves them. So that one stuck in my little head when I was like 10 years old. The 200 years is the 200 years of the story of the Catholic community in Singapore. And so it is my hope that with the celebration of Catholic 200, an occasion for our Catholics to be reunited in their faith, to appreciate the faith that they have inherited at the cost, at the price of many lives and sacrifices. To commemorate this Catholic 200 SG, there's a whole series of events that are lined up from December 2020 right through to December 2021. We will also reflect as a diocese on where we have come from and where we are going to. So, to enlighten the faith and shine, they capture the vision and mission of the Archdiocese. And so to enlighten is the first step to renew the faith of our people, to make our Catholics vibrant in their faith. And to shine simply means to be the sword of the earth, the light of the world which is to evangelize and to be missionaries for Christ. So, the theme which you have chosen, Ignite and Shine with Faith, 
it is an appropriate topic for these times. And here in Singapore, as we celebrate this Catholic 200 SG, we want to see this as a community, together as one. Not by the different orders of different missionaries, but here we celebrate everybody's contribution to how the church has grown. We are all sons and daughters of the Father. We are all the beloved of God. And that's a continual need for our conversion. So it's really the grace of God to make us see that we are all one family. La. We have to deepen and really ask ourselves, are we igniting this awareness of doing the will of God as a faith community? We are people in love and people for love. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, I invite all of you to reflect on your faith, to thank God for the gift of faith that you have received, to return the gift that you have received by making yourself available to grow in your faith, to effectively contribute, and most of all, is to build a vibrant, evangelizing and missionary church. On behalf of His Holiness Pope Francis, I bestow on you the apostolic blessing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, you, my my brothers and sisters, that I have have greatly greatly sinned sinned in my my thoughts thoughts and in my my words, in what I have done done, and in what what I have failed to do, do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. this most sacred night, radiant the splendor of the true light. Grant, we pray that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. from the prophet Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness has seen a great light. On those who live in a land of deep shadow, a light has shone. You have made their gladness greater. 
You have made their joy increase. They rejoice in your presence as men rejoice at harvest time, as men are happy when they are dividing the spoils. For the yoke that was weighing on him, the bar across his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, these you break as on the day of Midian. For all the footgear of battle, every cloak rolled in blood is burnt and consumed by fire. For there is a child born for us, a son given to us, and dominion is laid on his shoulders. And this is the name they give him, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wide is his dominion in a peace that has no end for the throne of David and for his royal power, which he establishes and makes secure in justice and integrity. From this time onwards and forever, the jealous love of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Today, a Savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Oh, sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the earth. O oh, sing to the Lord, bless his name. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Proclaim his help day by day. Tell among the nations his glory and his wonders among all the peoples. Today a Saviour has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. Let the heavens rejoice and earth be glad. Let the sea and all within it thunder praise. Let the land and all that bears rejoice. All the trees of the wood shout for joy at the presence of the Lord. For he comes, he comes to rule the earth. Today a savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. With justice, he will rule the world. He will judge the peoples with his truth. Today, a savior has been born to us. He is Christ the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. God's grace has been revealed and it has made salvation possible for the whole human race and taught us that what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God and all our worldly ambitions. We must be self-restrained and live good and religious lives here in this present world while we are waiting in hope for the blessing which will come with the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Christ Jesus. He sacrificed himself for us in order to set us free from all wickedness and to purify a people so that it could be his very own and would have no ambition except to do good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. I bring you news of great joy. Today, a savior has been born to us, Christ the Lord, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Caesar Augusta issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea, to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the inn. In the countryside close by there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to wash their flocks during the night. The angel Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid, listen. I bring you news of great joy a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today, the town of David, the Saviour, has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And He is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swelling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly host, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy His favour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, in the first reading from the prophet Isaiah, we read, The people that walk in darkness have seen the great light. On those who live in the land of deep shadow, a light has shone. My dear brothers and sisters, who are those people that walk in darkness? Who are those people that continue to live in a land of deep shadow? Yesterday, I went to visit an elderly lady. She is 94 years old. And she is in very good health. But she is all alone because her only son is always away traveling at work. And she was looked after by a helper. Other than the fact that she has good health, she is not able to walk, not so mobile. And so she needs someone to hold her. And she said to me, I'm 94 years old. My health is so good. I have no illness. But if I have no illness, how can I die? And she was tired of living. Because for her life has no more meaning, no more purpose. Her son is always away. 
Every day, she is looking at the four walls, the company of a TV and a dog. I also visited an elderly priest. He is sickly and also unable to walk. And he told me, Bishop, I have been asking the Lord to bring me home. But I've been waiting and he has still not called me. So I quit. I said to him, you know, St. Peter is very busy with the COVID-19 cases. You are not on the priority admission. You just have to wait. For elderly people who have really done, so to speak, their mission in life, what is there for them to hope for? Every day, they are just waiting to return home. Because life does not seem to have any more purpose, any more meaning. Indeed, my dear brothers and sisters, those who live in a land of deep shadow and those who walk in darkness are not necessarily people who are elderly, who are sickly. Even healthy people like us how do you find life? Sometimes when you look at your life, are you truly living a fulfilled life? For many of us, life is a real struggle every day. We are worried about our financial situation, about our health, about our family. We are worried about our business, our job, our promotion, and all day long, every day, we are fighting to survive. And the little pleasures that we have, and sometimes this ego fulfillment trip that we have. But is that what life is all about? Have you ever wondered with all the achievements in your life, do you really feel that your life has meaning and purpose. That is why there are many people who are healthy, who are strong, who are apparently successful. They also do not find life truly worth living. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, at Christmas, God reveals to us the true meaning of our existence. The meaning of existence is found in the ordinariness of life. That's why God has come to us, not as a stately king, not in his majesty and his glory. The king of kings came in a little baby, a little child. He was not dressed in fine clothes, but his swaddling clothes. His throne was the manger. God became small <clears throat> so that we will not be afraid to approach him. God became one of us so that we can feel close to him. A baby is never threatening, not intimidating. Anyone who sees a baby, a child, immediately responds with love, with tenderness. And that is how the Lord wants us to remember. If we want to find the true meaning in life, it is really a question of finding God in ordinary life in the simplicity of our life. That is why during this COVID-19 pandemic, the Lord is stripping us of all the non-essentials and to come back to what is really essential. The other day, I went to visit an elderly couple. 
They are staying in a one-room HDB flat, 37 square meter. The lady is about 70 over years old, and the man in his late 80s. The man cannot walk. I went there to bring Jesus to them, but actually they brought Jesus to me, more than I brought Jesus to them. Because in this couple, I saw the face of God in them. I saw the way they look after each other, the way they cared for each other. When I was talking to them, two young ladies knocked at the door and they brought a packet of fruit or food. So I asked her, who donated this? He says, Your Grace, every day, Those from the Hindu, it's a Hindu welfare home, will send us the food. One packet for lunch, one for dinner. And I look at the food. One scoop of vegetable or one scoop of meat or fish. And that packet was meant for two of them. And look at the simplicity. And they were grateful and they were so happy they told me one packet only cost 60 cents. When I saw the two young ladies who brought the food, I said there is hope in this world. That young people do care. That young people care for those people that they do not even know. And the love of God is universal. It is not just Catholics serving the poor, the non-Catholics, but even the non-Catholics are serving our Catholics who are poor. And most of all, <clears throat> her eyes brightened up when she told me, you know, Your Grace, the government give us $150 NTUC voucher for grocery twice a year. And she was so grateful for the $150 for her to buy grocery. And the best thing of all also, the food that was provided for that year is free because some benefactors have provided and paid for the 60 cents for the packet of food. And she told me, this year, we don't have to pay utility bills at all. And she was so grateful. And she was so joyful. You know, after I left her place, when I was going back, I began to wonder. For me as a bishop, I don't care about things. I don't think and care about money, about my food, because they are all supplied. And very often, I take what is supplied for granted. I don't think much, because I'm just focused on my ministry, on my work. But for these poor people, even a packet of food, simple food, shared by two persons, they are so full of joy and gratitude. And I was deeply moved that it doesn't take many things in life to make a person happy. That is why Mother Teresa did tell us, you know, the most difficult people to please and to make them happy are the rich people. It's not the poor. And so this is a very important message for all of us. If we want to find God, God is found in the small things of life. It is not about our achievements. It is not about the clothes that we wear. 
It is not about what we have done. The real happiness and joy of life is to find authentic people whom we can relate with, who care for us. And I'm reminded when I was going back that actually the happiest things in life are free. Let me narrate to you a personal um, trial I went through. You know, recently for one month, uh, I couldn't sleep at all. Normally, I had no problem sleeping. Normally, the moment my head rests on the pillow, within five minutes, I fall asleep. Until one day, uh, this lady came to ask me, say, Father, how do you fall asleep? I said to myself, I said to her, what a silly question, just sleep now. And then after that, I begin to ask the question, how do I fall asleep actually? Then I start thinking how I was falling asleep. And the moment when I start thinking how do I fall asleep, I can't sleep. So my mind is so alert, am I falling asleep? Am I falling asleep? Am I going to sleep? So that kept me awake. For a month, you know. Then after that, I said, I must not think that I'm falling asleep. So now I start to think how not to think that I'm falling asleep. It was such a psychological kind of uh, situation. And for one month, I hardly slept. Not even two hours. So after I came out of it, I pray to God, say, God, you better help me because I think I will collapse in no time if this thing carries on. And when the whole thing was over, I said to myself, actually, yeah, the best things in life are free. I will give up everything just for one night of sleep. Those of you who have insomnia, you will understand. If you cannot sleep at night the whole day, you can't do your work properly. And these things are free, but we take them for granted. That is why, my dear brothers and sisters, as we celebrate Christmas, it is very important for us to remember this. That we can find the joy of Christmas where? Interestingly, the angel told the shepherds, I bring you news of great joy. And where is this joy? It is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swelling clothes, lying in a manger. It is in the manger, the ordinariness of life, that you will find God. And secondly, we are told, if you want to find God, it is a question of happiness with your loved ones. It is in compassion, in service, and in love. As we reveal the face of Jesus to others, we will come to encounter his joy deeply. And that is why today in the second reading, St. Paul tells us, God's grace has been revealed. And what we have to do is to give up everything that does not lead to God. All our worldly ambitions, we must be self-restrained and live good and religious life in this present world. When we give our ambition, ambition do not fulfill us. It is when we make time for people, make time for true friendship and love. That is why during this Christmas, we must avoid this hedonistic, consumeristic attitude. It is not just buying gifts and giving to each other or exchanging gifts. And we can do it in a functional manner. But it's the persons that are important. So, if you want to truly experience the joy of Christmas, it is your presence, not your presence. Your presence are secondary. It is how you mediate your presence of God to one another. 
So we pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that we have the simplicity of the shepherds, simplicity of Mary and Joseph, for it is on simplicity that we reveal the face of God. Amen. I believe in one God, O Father Almighty, maker of, of heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten yes. Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. Please kneel. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. Please stand. For our sake he was crucified, crucified under Pontius Pilate. Pilate. He, he suffered, suffered death and was buried. buried and rose, rose again, again on the third day, day in, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, I believe, I believe in one, in one holy, holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. Church. I, confess I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters gathered here this night, we celebrate the birth of Jesus. He is the light scattering the darkness of sin, making the world radiant with his love. Let our response be, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that we rejoice in the birth of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world, and so live a Christian life full of faith and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For Pope Francis, our Archbishop William, and all leaders of the Church, that they continue to guide us to radiate the joy of Jesus' gospel and the light of his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For the world, as it continues to battle the COVID-19 pandemic and all countries suffering from the violence of armed conflict, that our mighty God and Prince of Peace inspire the leaders of all nations to work collaboratively and compassionately to bring stability and peace to their peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our worshipping community, that in response to the Christmas message, we may put ourselves in the hands of the Lord and trust him to transform our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all who are sick and housebound this Christmas season, that we reach out in love to them in whatever way possible to ease their pain and loneliness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those stretched financially, are unemployed, living with mental or physical illness, face distress in the family, are burdened by anger or loneliness, that they might find in Jesus' state of birth in poverty and dislocation and assurance that they are loved 
and not forgotten, and that the Lord is not removed or blind to their plight and the difficulties they face. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pause to pray for our own intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly Father, on this night together with your angels, we sing of your glory and your goodness. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. Let us live in faith, loving you and caring for each other. Till the day you call us back to our humble home, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we pray the Catholic 200 SG prayer together. Heavenly Father, your, your Son commissioned his apostles, apostles to, bring to bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. earth. Our founding missionaries left home and country so that we in Singapore may receive the good news and your loving salvation. Thank you for this gift of faith and for all who labor to keep it alive and burning these 200 years. Lord Jesus, our faith is in danger of becoming irrelevant because of secularism, materialism, individualism and relativism. When our communities renew missionary zeal and courage to proclaim your name and lordship, send forth your spirit, O Lord, to renew your people with the conviction and courage of our early missionaries. Rekindle our faith so that we can become beacons of light in the world, darkened by sin, hopelessness and ignorance. Protect us from the snares of the evil one and grant us the grace to remain faithful to you. May our families be models of love and unity. Our workplaces be sanctuaries for justice and integrity. Truth and charity be taught in our classrooms. Parishes live out their mission in communion. The poor, the sick and abandoned see the face of God in us. May peace and harmony reign among peoples of every race, language and religion in our land. Blessed Mother, you were the first disciples and evangelizer to announce Jesus as Saviour to the world. Intercede and grant us your maternal guidance and protection as we navigate the uncertain future. Father, may your love and grace ignite our hearts and lead us to launch a new era of faith so that we may once again be a more vibrant evangelizing and missionary church. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, your offering may be made via pay now or dropped into boxes at the exits at the end of Mass. Your generosity is appreciated.
Great brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the oblation of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone among the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in Him God made visible, we may be caught up through Him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guide, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth and on the Catholic and Apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, on all who gathered here, with faith and devotion unknown to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Saviour for this world and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, we then Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family unite our order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, on the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For well, this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept. The gifts of your servant Abel the just, sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation in the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. And with us we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I lift you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a warm sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon The word became flesh, and we have seen his glory.
Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, that we who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's nativity may through an honourable way of life become worthy of union with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for some announcements. Um, mass booking for January opens on 29 December, Tuesday, 9 a.m. Please do not subscribe to our tele Telegram or follow us on social media for more timely updates. Or do subscribe to our Telegram. Huh? As the cathedral increases our mass, our mass capacity, entry will be via individual trace together app token. Scanning safe entry QR codes with phone cameras or through the SingPass mobile app or barcodes on NRIC will not be possible in the next phase. Group check-in will also not be possible. We also have a set of three Christmas themed bookmarks for you. They can be found at the exits to drop a love offering in the mass offering boxes. Later, please exit your zones according to the image on the slide and leave the cathedral promptly by the appropriate gates. For zones 1 and 4, St. Matthew's gates near the NTUC income building. For zones 2, 3 and 5, St. Mark's gate is nearer to the rectory. Do not gather in large groups and keep your mask on at all times. So we give thanks to God for this celebration. We thank you for coming for this celebration and those of you who are watching online. Um, it's not too bad. Lah, huh? uh, the last time I celebrated my Mass here uh, without a congregation at all. So at least now I see some faces. So that's a great improvement. Huh? From a no congregation to 100 over people seems to be quite a lot. So the, we give praise and thanks to God for um, all the blessings that we've received. And I also want to thank uh, all the volunteers, author servers, uh, the choirs who have pre-recorded some of the music pieces. And we thank all of you for the wardens, community ministers, uh, for your cooperation. So we wish you all a Merry Christmas on behalf of Father Jude, Monsignor Francis Loud and um, Father Brian and Father Samuel, we wish you a blessed Christmas and we continue to pray for you and we pray that this COVID-19 pandemic will uh, eventually be overcome so that we can come together for uh, normal worship again. Thank God and thank you for your presence. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illumined this most holy night, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gift of his peace and favour and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.
from the very beginning of creation, you have made manifest your love. When our need for our Savior was great, you sent your Son to be born to the Virgin Mary. To our lives, he brings joy and peace, justice, mercy and love. Lord, bless all who look upon this manger. May it remind us of the humble birth of Jesus and raise our thoughts to you. Who is God with us and Saviour of us all, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
orders and follow the warden's directions. Please exit your zones according to the image on the slide and leave the cathedral promptly by the appropriate gates. For zone